In 2011, the federal government spent $3.8 trillion. We can break federal spending down into five parts. Entitlements include Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid payments to the sick and elderly. Net interest is the interest the government pays on its debt minus the interest it receives. Other spending includes food stamps, unemployment benefits, and child nutrition and tax credits. Supplemental income for the disabled, also student loans. These three items make up what is called mandatory spending. This is an amount of spending that is automatically built into every budget by law. Defense spending includes spending on the military, plus foreign military aid, plus veteran services. Everything else includes everything we normally think of when we think of government, with the exception of defense and entitlements. It includes the departments of agriculture, commerce, education, plus many independent agencies. Defense and everything else comprise what is called discretionary spending. Discretionary spending must be approved by Congress each year, while mandatory spending is automatic unless Congress votes to alter it. Now let's compare the federal government's spending to its income. In 2011, the federal government collected a total of $2.2 trillion from various taxes, licenses, and fees. Now, advocates of social welfare programs complain that economists look primarily to Social Security and Medicare when seeking budget cuts. Here we see why. If we were to eliminate the entirety of government with the exception of social programs and the interest on the debt, we still wouldn't be able to balance the budget. For the next decade, the government will face tough choices. The wrong way to deal with these choices is to weigh specific cuts, because there are no specific cuts that will solve the problem. Nothing less than a redesign of government will solve this problem. And that redesign should begin with the question, what is the proper role of government?